like why you had to take my brother's way Money and my mattress, but I had to cap another shake I just cap another shake, I just cap another shake All these bitches on me now so, we all know that the NBA season usually consists of 82 games, and the season usually lasts for about 8 months, including the playoffs. But that wasn't the case in the 1998-1999 NBA season when there was only 50 games played that NBA season because of the 1998-1999 NBA lockout. Yo guys, what's going on? Modern Hoops here, and today, I'm gonna be talking about the shortest season in NBA history. Now, the 1998-99 NBA lockout was the third lockout out of four in NBA history. It lasted from July 1st, 1998 all the way to January 20, 1999, and it forced the 1998-1999 regular season to be shortened to only 50 games. And with that being said, the All-Star game was canceled that year also, but if you guys don't know what a lockout is, well, I'm going to try to explain it to you the best that I can. Now, the standard of a lockout is the exclusion of employees by their employer from their place of work until certain terms are agreed to. So to make it more clear, it's when a company stops their employees from working because maybe the owners and the employees may disagree on certain things regarding the workplace. And that's exactly what happened in the NBA between the owners and the NBPA, which is the players. And if you're wondering what they were arguing about, well, it was over the collective bargaining agreement or in shorter terms, the CBA. And if you guys don't know what the CBA is, well, I'm gonna try to explain it to you also the best that I can. Now, the CBA is like a contract between NBA players and the owners. It regulates working salaries, you know, how players get paid and how much they get paid. It also regulates working conditions, benefits, and how contracts work in the NBA. So essentially, it's like a set of rules or guidelines in the NBA but after a certain amount of time the CBA has to be reopened and a new agreement has to be met and the CBA could last up to six years or more give or take a few but before 1998 there had been two lockouts in the previous three years the first one was a labor dispute that lasted more than two months in 1995 and the second one was a brief work stoppage in 1996 that ended within only three hours but on both occasions the players and the owners reached an agreement before the start of the season unlike 1998 but a six-year CBA was actually in place since September 1995, but it included a clause allowing NBA owners to reopen the contract after three years if more than 51.8% of basketball-related income went to the player salaries, and that's exactly what happened. So the negotiations between the owners and the players lasted up to six months, yep, six months, and it actually started on June 22nd, but when an agreement couldn't be met, the lockout started nine days later on July 1st and to break down the arguments or what they were arguing about well the owners wanted to change how rookie contracts work and wanted to ban the use of drugs while the players wanted to avoid a decline in salaries oppose changes to the salary cap and support for a raise of the minimum salary and during the lockout teams were banned from making player transactions basically they were banned from making trades and holding workouts and meetings for the duration of the work stoppage so basically during the lockout teams could not do anything and i mean anything basketball related and every time both sides tried to negotiate an agreement it never happened i'm telling you they could never reach an agreement and this carried on all the way to october and all the way to december imagine going that long with no basketball being played i don't know what i would do honestly and it was the first time in nba history that games were canceled due to a labor dispute and on December 23rd, David Stern actually announced that he would recommend canceling the whole entire season if an agreement was not made by January 7th. But both parties had a meeting on December 27th, but a deal still couldn't be met. And they also met again on January 4th, but a deal still couldn't be made. The season as a whole was so close to being canceled until January 6th. And yes, the last day before the deadline, a agreement was finally met between both sides and the agreement was officially signed by both parties on january 20 officially ending the lockout after 204 days 
pretty insane. But because of the lockout, the All-Star game was canceled and the season was shortened to only 50 games and the Spurs went on to win the championship that year. But the lockout had a huge impact on the league's reputation. The average attendance during the shortened season was down. Ticket sales fell nearly 2% further in the opening months of the 1990-2000 NBA season and remained below average per game for the following three seasons. Also, television ratings also dropped for three consecutive seasons after the lockout. And the last lockout to actually happen took place in 2011 when the season was shortened to only 66 games. But it's crazy how a whole season, a whole season was a day away from being canceled, but luckily they were able to reach an agreement. But this video did take me some time to do and I did enjoy doing the research but I would appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button, share and subscribe for more NBA content. But with that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you all later. Peace.